This video is about the static switch nodes in Unreal Engine materials. I'm gonna explain what they are, what they're used for, and how we can use them. So let's do it. Right click in the material graph and search for a static switch. Two results will pop up. They both do the same thing, but this one is a parameter, meaning we can control it from the material instance. They have a true and a false input, a default value, and one output. I'll go over their settings later in the video. We can use this section to add a comment to the nodes. We can also right click on the node and add the comment from here. So what do they do? They take in two inputs. If the default value is checked, they will output the true input and if the default value is unchecked, they will output the false input. Their difference is that this one only implements the switch and doesn't create a parameter. Add two constants, set one of them to one, connect them like this and connect the switch node to the base color input. The default value is unchecked. So the switch will output the node that is connected to the false input, which is 1 or white. If I click here to check the default value, then it will output what is connected to the true input, which is 0 or black. The static switch node only has the default value option, but the static switch parameter has more settings. Parameter name is the name we will find in the material instance. I usually like to name them in a question tone. For example, in this case, I can name it is black connect the constants to it and connect it to the base color input apply and save the material create a material instance and open it we can see the is black option here if i enable it the material will be black and when it's disabled the material is white dynamic branch turns it from a static pool to a dynamic pool when it's enabled, we can use the parameter with dynamic branching. I haven't used it before, but the difference between a dynamic pool and a static pool is that dynamic pool can be changed at runtime. Right now, group is set to none. In the material instance, we can see that the parameter is under the global static switch parameter values section. We can change that. Set the group to base color for example, apply and save. And now the parameter is under the base color section. It's good for organizing the material instance when we have a lot of parameters. Sort priority is also for better organization of the parameters. Let's convert this constant to a parameter, name it color, set the group to base color, apply and save. Right now the parameters are organized alphabetically, but maybe we want the switch parameter to be on the top. For that, we should make sure that the sort priority of the switch is lower than the color parameter. By default, sort priority is set to 32 for all the parameters. So if I change this one to any value lower than that, 31 for example, and apply, we can see that now the switch is on the top. Next, I'll go over some things to consider when using these nodes. But before getting to that, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also join our community on Telegram, Discord and Facebook and check out my Patreon if you are interested in supporting the channel. If we want to control the switch value from a material instance, we can use a static pool parameter. Connect it to the value input on the node, name it whatever you want and set the default value. The settings are exactly the same as the static switch parameter settings. Now we can control the value from the material instance. Static switches are named static because they cannot change at runtime. They are applied at compile time, not at runtime, and they can only be set in the editor. This means that whatever branch of the material was dropped is never executed, so static switches are effectively free at runtime. On the other hand, a new version of the material must be compiled for every used combination of static parameters in a material. That's because every static switch creates two variations of material in the background. It can lead to a massive increase in shader permutations. So if we have many nested materials using static switches, we might get permutations we didn't anticipate. 
In the worst case, that could mean all the shaders in the project need to recompile from toggling a single switch, and it could take a long time. So try to minimize the number of static switch parameters in the material and the number of permutations of those static parameters that are actually used. The point is to be conscious and deliberate about how we're using switches. Since there's no runtime cost, they're generally beneficial overall. Just keep things simple and well organized and there won't be a problem. So that's it. Click here for more Unreal stuff and thank you so much for watching. Like this video, subscribe and join our community on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. So, see you in the next one.